So, I guess, in keeping with past tradition, now that we've cleared a dungeon and got a cool new power, and now that we're in the plot, we're going to go and hand the guy a thing that historically moves things forwards, that it's time for a cleanup. It's almost like there's a structure to this LP. Beginning to think you might have been looking at the script. I'm I'm just that good at seeing where this is going. I can taste it in the water, man. I can feel it in my bones. So we can do a couple things here in the Ashlands, and I don't know why I had the gun equipped there, but so specifically we can now now that we have the hook shot, we can shut down this uh we can shut down the one driller that we couldn't get across on the top and there's also an abyssal armor piece that's hanging out on top of one of these things so this sounds like it would enormously inconvenience the oil industry so i'm all for it I and mean, i'm assuming that's what these things are for is it i mean i feel like they're just drilling they're not even like because i mean like we can go down in the holes like why why are they drilling People are just like, no, you know what, I, I like drilling, I'm a drilling enthusiast, I'm just going to build this enormous drill, just because I can. I mean, like I said, we can go down in the holes that they've drilled, and there doesn't seem to be anything down there other than water, so... I mean, also, are, are these, like, like, hell drills? Are they specifically built by people who came here after the apocalypse fucked everything up? Like, what is any of this stuff? What's the law, man? I, I mean, I would guess that given the incredibly Mad Max kind of construction that they have, that th these are probably post-apocalypse drills. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's a story here. I can feel it. So this is a special artifact. Uh, this is the only one of this kind in the game. Uh, and when we turn it, it is worth, I believe, like, 3,000 souls in and of itself. Plus, you get a free, uh, war... Or, you get a free wrath core when you turn it in. Cool. Sure. Why not? I don't know why it's there, because, like, that's not even a hard puzzle or anything. Like, you would think that would be, like, some super secret thing, but, nah, it's just there. It seems, a, it seems a weird way of doing that kind of exchange. I mean, why not just put a bunch of money and a wrath core down there? Like, that's that's what you do with out-of-the-way places in video games behind puzzles, is you put cool stuff behind them. But they've got this one-of-a-kind unique thing, and the only thing that makes it unique is that you have to take it to a shop in order to get something that isn't unique. So, what? I think the video games are starting to collapse in on themselves. I'm pretty sure we've been in the video game singularity for a while now. Yeah. I mean, the aesthetics aside, it's been, in my experience, pretty sane for most of the runtime here. It's been, like, classic. In both the good and the bad ways, but still classic, all the same. Sometimes it's even just been good. But this... this is the first thing that I think this, this game has done that just makes... absolutely no sense. Did, did you just slow time by opening a chest. Maybe? I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know. That that looked like what just happened there. Anyway, Strife's Offering is the one that increases like all your range damage, which it's probably the least useful. Uh, it's definitely the least useful of all the legendary enhancements, and it's honestly probably not all that high on the list in general. I'm guessing you can only have one of these things on at a time. Well, you can only have one of them on per weapon. Alright. 
Oh, I, I guess you can... You... Well... So, I mean, we could theoretically equip three of them on one on each of our weapons, but I don't know why you would ever equip that one. I mean, I guess if you wanted to power game it, you could have, like, the, the dump weapon that you have on that you never use, except if you want to shoot a bunch of stuff, you can switch to it and put the, the range enhancement on it. But that seems like a lot of effort. I think maybe this is a part of the game that wasn't really thought through all that well. Maybe. Just a feeling. So this is Abyssal Armor, I believe, number eight? This seems like the kind of thing that the game should tell you when you get each one. Like, hey, you found number X, like getting pieces of pieces of heart in Zelda. It always tells you. It's just how it should work. It's it's one of those little things. It's not a huge deal, but cause, I mean, it, they don't matter until you get them all anyway. So yeah, I mean it's just like one of one of my recurring pet theories is that any time a player wants to know something and has to open another menu to find it out when they should be getting told straight away is a failure on the part of the game. Anyway, we're getting close. Only two more Wrath Cores. Um, I mean, of course it goes exactly the whole way across the health bar. That's... That's absolutely just the law. That's how you have to do it. So, our final Wrath skill is Affliction, which I believe we will see later this video. But it is, uh, basically what happens is... You summon these two, like, poison snakes that surround you, and then they'll just kind of go off and attack enemies on their own. It's it's pretty nifty. I mean, I, I guess it's it's added damage. It's efficiency. Like, how many of these do we really need at this point? Not many. At this point, the only moves I'm buying are upgrades to the ones that I use all the time. That's completely fair. I mean, it seems like it's possible to buy too many of these things and end up in money trouble. Yeah, I mean, we're not... I'm trying to think of how many artifacts I have right now. I want to say I have about 75% of them, give or take. So... And most of the ones that are left are the 500 soul variety, so it's not like... It's not like we have another huge chunk of cash that's just lying around. Yeah, I guess. Uh, anyway, the the number of, of armor pieces thing is just is just one of those things that seems like a small thing, but I can't stop noticing it when it happens, and it really bugs me that it hasn't been like collectively figured out by decades of game development. I mean, maybe yeah, it, it actually has, and it's just that these people missed the lesson. It's, it's definitely the kind of thing that you only notice when it's not been done. But, like, it's absolutely a, an invisible hand thing. Like, a game just anticipates you wanting to know something, and then just tells you it. And you don't think anything of it, you're just like, yep, I know that. Game design. So now we can finally get the Wrath Shard that's hanging out in this uh, in this particular section. How long has it been? I, quite a while. Uh, it's been ever since we could travel to Anvil's Ford, so at the very least before the second dungeon. Yeah, that's a reasonable bit of time to keep something like this hanging for. Okay, yeah, there there I can definitely see how the whole having to detach from one thing before shooting the hookshot again might be possibly kind of irritating. A tiny bit. Yeah, we, we 
we actually still can't get the, uh... There's a health shard in one of the other ones. We still can't get that. We're missing another upgrade we need for that. Game's holding out, man. Like, it's just a piece of heart, man. We're, we're headed to the final dungeon real soon. How much How much longer are you going to hold this out on me? Saying this, this seems like... This seems like the kind of point in the plot at which most games should have, like, everything. All the, all the really important stuff available. I mean, it's not, it's not generally great to have to... Like, it's, it's not, it might not actually be a point of no return, but, like, anything involving moving a plot forward that you now go to a confrontation with what's obviously going to be the very final boss. It's always kind of psychologically a point of no return, and there shouldn't be stuff beyond it that you have to come back to. Oh, bravo! The last horse finally crosses the finish line. Guard, ah, you again. Yeah, he's uh, he's kind of a static difficulty enemy, so the fact that we now have like a supercharged level three sword makes this uh, significantly easier. That seems weirdly fitting. Like, I, I honestly think that works. Maybe it wasn't intentional, but like, it just seems entirely appropriate. I mean, bold word for somebody who's on fire. What the fuck was that? Yeah, you don't normally see that because of the way the camera works, but because I dodged the last second, you can see him disappearing. Where he just, like, kind of jumps into his own hat. Best not to think about it too hard. Okay, then. Anyway, yeah, this is Affliction. Yep. It seems efficient. That's just, like... That's a straight upgrade. I can appreciate it. Like, it's a really cool ability, but it does take two two bars per cast, so it will eat through your wrath very, very quickly. Right, calls for good use. Like, what's the, what actually is the damage like? Like, will it, will it kill things on its own? Oh, yes, absolutely. So worth it. Like it's it, it it comes down to what are you, what are you getting or alternatively what do you have to work slightly to get or what could you miss? But like, it seems like if you use it in a big crowd, then you can just use it to go and work on other things and they'll just thin the numbers for you. Or if you use it on one big beefy guy, it'll just add a whole shit ton of damage on top of whatever else you're doing. So it seems like you can't really lose. Unless you just activate it on a nothing and then waste the rest of it. But then how would that be different from any other spell? That's how it seems to me. It's a fair assessment. So, oh, well, I'm guessing there's only five Wrath Shards remaining then. Or possibly one and one whole one. Do you get whole ones? I can't remember. Well, I mean, we've gotten a couple whole ones. Like, we bought one from Volgrim, and we got one for turning in the super artifact, but... It uh, could conceivably be... one or the other. I'm not to know, am I? I don't know why you can use Ruin here, because there's really no purpose. But fuck it, why not? I mean... Sometimes the fuck it, why not is the purpose. That was poor camera work. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. All right, let's let's check in one last time. What can possibly go wrong? I was beginning to worry you might not live up to your end of the bargain. Give it to me. 
you lied to me about the Chosen. They never guarded the tower. What does it matter? How deal was it for ancient history? I promised you the tower, and you shall have it. Right then. So it's the loading zone, but red this time. That means it's serious. But for real though, I am I'm on I'm honestly actually surprised at how that went down. I was expecting something much stupider. Nah, man, man man's got a code of business. Give me the hearts and you get and you get the tower. They actually took this whole ridiculous thing and they sold it, and it worked. I, I, I gotta hand it to them. It's good. So yeah, right up the stairs here is the uh, is the Black Throne. So with and with that, we are officially in the final, the final dungeon. It's not the end of the game. That is absolutely the name of, like, the last thing of something. It's, a, it's not the end of the game, but we're getting real close. So we will see you next time for the Black Throne. And, like, apparently there's a whole other power up in here. So, like, you know, they kind of went and de-escalated some of their own tension, didn't they? Clever. <laughs>